And welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari has paid tribute to the late poet and emeritus professor of literature, John Pepe Clark, who died on Tuesday, October 13, 2020, at the age of 85, saying he left an indelible mark in the literary world. Acknowledging that Professor J.P. Clark's exit has indeed left an indelible mark in the literary world, President Buhari takes solace that his body of literary works, which earned him recognition and respect both at home and abroad, would continue to inspire upcoming Nigerian writers to pursue literary excellence and flourish in their chosen vocation. The governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, described J.P. Clark as a great, a great academic and a celebrated poet whose literary exploits brought honor and great respect to Nigeria. And joining us live is uh, Professor Tony Afejuku from the Department of English and Literature, University of Benin. Thank you so much for joining us, Prof. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for inviting me to be here. All right. I I'll start with the thank way... Thank you. Yes, I will start with the way the family um, announced his passing. They said, um, Clark has finally dropped his pen and paddled uh, to the grades beyond. How apt is this um, announcement, uh, the way it was announced? And tell us a bit about the life of this man. I'll begin by stating straight away that that description is very, very quite poetic, as it were. Uh, J.P. Clark, I, want, I don't know what you want me to say about his life, but he was known nationally as an Niger poet, an Niger writer, a Niger personage. But he actually was a man who had different blood chains in, in, in him. The, uh, personally, he was seen as an Egyptian, he was an Egyptian person, rightly. The mother of Robo, what, what many did not know, and still do not know, which I want to point out, is that he also had a shakiri blood not in him, because uh, one of his ancestors probably came from the Shekiri town of Ebokodo, Ebokodo Shekiri. So to that extent, he was a man, a personage of many places. Tell us about his As work. We have been told he also went to government college, really. What? Yes? Tell us about his work. Um, I mean, he's uh, phenomenal when it comes it to uh, poetry. Oh. Where, where do I begin from when you're talking about his work as a poet? But I can tell you very quickly that in secondary school, we read some of his poems. And the one that we always remember and we loved very deeply was Abiku. The Abiku, which we read in conjunction with the Shoinka's a poem of the same type. And in the university, I read the collection and his first collection, a read in the times, which was quite and is still quite a lyrical collection of poetry. J.B. Clark has been described rightly as the most lyrical of the Nigerian uh, of uh, the, the most of Nigerian poets. Quite an emotional poet. One thing again, people don't know, which I must emphasize now, is that he happened to be the first African professor of English. He was the first to be made a professor as an African. 
So he was quite a distinguished person, a distinguished personage, a, a distinguished writer. All right, Professor Federico, I, I want to uh, step in here. Who was known everywhere in the globe. And, I, and one work of his that I always want to talk about is America the American, which captured his experience, one experience, when he was a fellow at the University of Princeton, Princeton University in, in, in New Jersey. All right, and sir, you, you, we'll, we'll, we'll have to ask you to hold on to your thoughts. Just hold on to your thoughts. We will be back with you in a bit after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, still having a very interesting conversation with uh, Professor Tony Afejuku from the University of Benin and, of course, uh, speaking on uh, the life and times of uh, Professor uh, J.P. Clark, uh, the literary icon. Um, Professor Afejuku, I'm back to you now. Um, earlier, of course, in your statements, you, of course, uh, acknowledged that uh, J.P. Clark was a, a very, very prolific writer. He was also a poet a playwright and even a prose writer. Uh, I want to start with uh, some of his poems, uh, with uh, titles like A Read in the Tide, uh, which was written in 1965, uh, Casualties, a collection of poems also in 1966, which illustrates the heterogeneous nature of the Nigeria-Biafra War. And of course, if you remember Mandela, which of course was aimed at the emancipation of uh, Great Madiba at that time in 1988. Um, can you quickly share with us some of the impact of his poetry? Uh, uh, you've just mentioned a read in the tide, which I said earlier on happens to be his first collection of uh, poems. Uh, quite a lyrical collection, as I said before. But let's go straight to casualties, which historians will always regard as a collection that truly and fully and honestly captured the Nigerian Biafra war. What transpired depends, the difficulties are to quote J.P. Clark difficulties. It's a work that illustrates very tragically what it meant for brothers to go against brothers, to fight a war, a civil war, that actually was quite unnecessary. And of course, in that collection, the biographical as well as autobiographical, as well as historical collection, we saw his different moods, different pains, is association with those who did what they did, his friends, his Igbo friends, and other pains who started to allude to what he said, to ask uh, what they were finished. They started the war, they could not, of course, it was referring to the late Emmanuel Fajuna, his great friend. So what we're saying is that casualties will always remain there in our study of J.P. Clark. And any reference to the Nigerian Civil War without a mention, a serious mention of casualties, will have something, a minus, to say about it. So that is what I want to say casualties. As I said, and I was saying about America, the America, it captured his one year experience in Princeton, where he was. And of course, his rebelliousness as a person, as a character, as a lyrical animal, as well as a romantic poet, is also well contained in that uh, a wonderful book. 
which I've written, uh, I'll call an interesting essay on. Okay. Incidentally, my very first meeting with him in Cape Bodom on the invitation of his younger brother, who I went with, would always stay very beautifully in my memory. All I right. had a close contact with Jeppe Clark. And of course, that was my Professor, second I, I encounter would... to contact with his elder brother, Ike Clark. All right, Prof, I, I was trying to interject. I know you have so many fond memories of um, uh, Professor JP. Um, let's look a bit about, um, look a bit towards uh, recognition that he got for his work. So we know that in the early seven, in, in sometime in the 70s, um, his poem, I think The Night Rain, was part of uh, the poems that was featured in the West African examination um, at the time. And uh, we also know that uh, he was given an award as the member of the Order of the Niger. Uh, the question is, do you think um, that um, maybe he escaped um, much the required acclaim for his work because of um, his uh, um, penchant to stay away from the media? Uh, you know, that like J.B. Clark <laughs> was also a media person. Gradually started his working career as a journalist, as a features editor. He didn't the I remember exactly now, but he was a media person. But over the years, he stayed away from the limelight, the glaze. That was something, and she said, I couldn't fathom why I don't know. It was a taxiton person. And I remember asking him this question in Kaboro. He didn't give me the answer that I thought I would get. Let's leave it at. <laughs> Your reference is rain. I mean, very, very apt again, I must say. But night rain, at the time it captured what it meant to be a Niger person, his experiences, is very autobiographical of life in the Niger data. And what he said then long ago is still very relevant today. You can see that the, the, the point, as we always say, is a good mirror, not only of his environment, of his generation and of generations to come. So night rain is a very, very wonderful autobiographical cover of the life of every Niger a Ijaw, Robo, Ishakiri, and others that you know we can name as it were. So that's another very, very wonderful uh, a poem that you wrote uh, written. But what influence that JP Clark had on me, I must tell you, in my first poetry lecture. A Garden of Moods. I have there a poem called A Chakuri Dancer. <laughs> Incidentally, was first published by Chinobe in the Journal of African Writing that he founded, Okike. That poem was written after the manner of Jake Lark's Agbo Dancer. And that's one poem that's. Uh, Numeratics of my poetry always talk about too. So, uh, you can call it an imitation, a correct imitation of J.B. Clark. He influenced me in that uh, uh, he used to Professor be Professor Fejiku. Uh, I want, uh, let me once again step in here and uh, moving into the discussion on honoring these literary uh, giants and scholars. Uh, sometimes um, they are seen as non-conformist, uh, uh, rejecting awards. Of course, if you remember, a very uh, big case was uh, Chinu Achebe who rejected uh, national honors a couple of times from the federal government. Do you blame the government for not honoring them um, as they should? Well, I don't know what you mean by blaming the government. Yes. What would be your what, suggestion? What 
by saying that the government did honor them as they should. But J.B. Clark was honored by the government being a winner of the Nigerian uh, National Merit Award for intellectual achievement. I mean, that's one great honor that nobody can take away. I said we also won that award, as well as Walishenka. I remember vividly that it was Achebe who rejected the honors and bestowed on him, if I remember correctly, by uh, Alushangu Obadjo as our president, because he wasn't happy with the way things were going on in Nigeria as at that time. In fact, things are even worse now. I think J.B. Clark himself just stayed away. He never commented on anything because there was nothing to comment about. Nothing good to say about the humanists. I think he was fed up with the Nigerian what? I said, and towards, I would say, the end of his life, he was not writing what we can call philosophical poetry. All his poems of the latter years were highly philosophical, personal, talking about death, about life, and all that. I mean, he completely, you know, forgot, I must say it. Right. About, about the, the, the Nigerian state. Uh, how happened? also, uh, Professor Federico, how, how would you suggest that great authors like this should be immortalized? Uh, 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 our so called, you know, uh, the, the, uh, you know immortalized uh, uh, writers or intellectuals is a very anti uh, uh, country that we are in. So what 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 do I suggest? I don't need to suggest anything to this government. The government should know what they should do for people like Walishin, Jeb, uh, and even Achebe. Even a Quincy, who, what what have they done for him? What have they done for Achebe? This is a very very anti intellectual environment. What what are they doing with you? What what are they doing with you? You think Jeb Clark was happy? He was not even happy at all. In fact, I think one or two years ago, if I remember correctly, the, in Unilag, there was a conference in, 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 of him, I was at that, was at that conference, which again would have been a very, very uh, wonderful conference. But then I was away in the United States. And I'm, incidentally, I was talking about, again, America, the American Americans, about J.B. Clark. That's why I beat that conference. Well, uh, the only honor. Could have been done one great one that you know, like, you know hand for him. In fact, was Udwang and Governor who built the Jelak Center in Uniland, which would be there standing as a great honor, a great honor that will stand ever to mortalize him, the dare to mortalize him. Udwang of Delta State did that. But what do you expect the federal government to do? For this man, like Achebe, like Shoinka, that has brought out the name of Nigeria, the image of Nigeria, very, very positively internationally. So All the right. government, the government do what they should, what they should do. I don't uh, know what the co can do, but I don't need to tell them. This All man right, Professor. has paid his dues for Nigeria, for mankind, for the world, for the universe. All right, Professor. Uh, uh, well, don't want to do um, I'm afraid that's the much time will permit us uh, on this part of the conversation. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, I think uh, the network was bad. He couldn't hear me. But we still thank you again uh, for joining us and sharing uh, your thoughts. He's been talking to us about the uh, late emeritus professor of literature, John Pepe Clark. A legend, really. Total legend. I'm, uh, I'm... I think my love for poetry started with some of the works that they put out. Um, I just go randomly looking for something new. Words have a way of. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how a lot of persons don't, um, you know, understand the genre itself. They just feel maybe it's words lined up together. But if you are someone that loves letters, you will see the beauty. I mean. They put words and you can see them before your eyes yes. to appreciate uh, what they've done. I'm Amazing really, man. really concerned about, you know, how we have also been able to
push uh, literature and poetry and all of that over the years. If, you know, over time we've been able to get ourselves to a place where we can have the new J.P. Clarks and the new Wally showing cars oh, in this generation. Oh, we have loads of them. Just um, the recognition. I mean, we, we have a whole lot of recognition for people um, with no disrespect to the Big Brother Niger show and some other reality TV show. The kind of publicity we get. Just go on Google. Put in. Look for Nigerian poets. There are zillions of them out there. It's just um, they don't get the recognition that they deserve. And the genre, like I said earlier, doesn't seem to appeal to a whole lot of people. A lot of people. You know, except exactly. you have this passion for words, then you, the words will leap at you. They will come alive. I don't know. I'm just being a little dramatic because it's something I love so much. You obviously have a passion for I for certainly poetry. do. I, I don't have, you know, that much. You know, I just, certainly do. Yeah. We thank him for all that he has been able to gift us um, in words and uh, opening our mind's eyes to see uh, beyond what is before us. Thank Absolutely. you very much to the late Professor John Pepe Clark. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.